Good afternoon, everyone. Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Sunday, May 5th, 11 a.m. We're in the geothermal greenhouse to check on things, open it up, check on our pests, and more importantly, to do some integrated pest management. What you see is ladybugs coming out of their bag. Some of these are just shaking these babies around here liberally. Now, what am I doing? Why am I putting bugs in my garden? Well, ladybugs are beneficial insects. <coughs> They're part of an integrated pest management plan, which basically is permaculture principles. You can use insects. There are several forms. I'm just shaking these around my garden. Shaking them here in the tomatoes, the medicine. <coughs> so, it's not hard to let these babies go. Now... For 20 bucks, I just bought a box this big. This is the size I get. I don't know how many there are, a couple thousand for 20 bucks, but it's just enough. Most of these are gonna go out the door. Some of them will stay and lay eggs. <coughs> but why am I putting them in here? Because we have aphids on the plum tree and we have aphids over here on some of the kale. And I've been spraying with Dr. Bronner's and water <clears throat> which most organic gardeners do. They spray with that. So I'm just having some breakfast here with my coffee. Now, integrated pest management involves layering your farming practices with multivariate uh, species so that you don't have any monocropping you have different things flowering at different times to attract pollinators in and predator insects to eat your pests. So biodiversity is key. Interplanting is key. Buying aphid-resistant varieties like this white kale, which many people from around the country are telling me is being a number one crop this spring because it's resistant to all the moisture, the wet, the flooding. It's also resistant. It can be frozen, go down to 20 degrees and still look like this. This has been below freezing about five times. It actually makes the crop stronger. Here we have pak choy and sunflower interplanted with daikon radish and rainbow carrot. So just to let enough light in here to the carrot, I take the daikon radish leaf off when it starts covering it and I feed it to the chickens. This uh, may increase the root growth quickly. Do you see the root growing there? This daikon is only maybe three weeks old and we'll check on it. We'll just pull one. So you can see the radish is starting to form. So in about three weeks, we're gonna have huge daikons. And I'll just feed that to the chickens. And I just want to go and push this down here. Okay. That just brought in a little light to these carrots. Because I love carrots, fresh ones. So you can see how I've done an interplanting here with some beets and some garlic. And in between, we now have, in an empty space, I'm going to have a quick crop of spinach in here. Because my spinach crop is going to be done in just about two weeks. It's just ripening. Gorgeous. So if you keep planting spinach every two weeks, you'll always have spinach. Spinach grows to 19 degrees, so it's a crop you can have the, your whole life, every day, no matter where you live. Doesn't matter where you live, you can have spinach. Take a look at our, I got ladybugs in my coffee. Let's save her. They're everywhere, it's awesome. This is a good way to get kids involved. Kids love ladybugs. So basically, I'm going to just, I don't want to have too many in one spot, you know? I want them to be happy. I, want, I don't want them to feel like it's North Philly, where I came from. <laughs> so we're just going to let these babies, oh, let's look at this. Here's the center centerpiece. It's like some kind of a growing medium. There's hundreds of bugs in here. We'll just let them walk around, go where they want. 
Now, let's talk about ladybugs. <laughs> I was doing some research. You can buy them. That's $20 worth, easiest way. If you don't have 20 bucks, you can lure them. It's pretty simple. And you can see I have these ladybug lures at each doors. They have snapdragons. And this is a six pack of alyssum, which is a flowering perennial, which does good at zone two to three or higher. <clears throat> Specifically here, there's almost nothing that grows outside here. So this does. And every year comes back bigger and bigger. And it is a ladybug attractor. <sighs> So they'll come in at the door with the smell and they'll be in the greenhouse. So that's one of the ways you can get ladybugs into your greenhouse for free is you plant lots of things that flower all the time that ladybugs like. Alyssum is on the top of the list. Um, you really can't use ladybugs if you're using insecticide. So this is really an organic gardening um, strategy or a permaculture strategy. So that's why we're using it here. Integrated pest management utilizes observation too. So each greenhouse is different. You need to observe and react to what's happening. Areas that are pest free, that have the right biome, you wanna repeat it throughout. You wanna rotate things. At some point you'll hit a perfect balance and that's what really what we're looking for perfect balance where we don't have to spray any more soap on our plants, that the natural biome, the integrated pest management is doing its job. And that's really gonna be good news for us because it gives us all kind of amazing, biodynamic, nutritious mm, foods that don't get sprayed with anything. They only get sprayed with love, which is why they're so delicious. These radishes are, oh, here's a done one. Beautiful. So, some radishes for my breakfast. The reason I'm taking these out is to eat them and also to get into some bigger summer crops in here. Because a whole bunch of radishes is only worth $2, where a single tomato is worth 5 <laughs> in our area. One that I grow anyway, some more... Ladybug attractors. I got one here by the door. Bee bomb is really looking nice. And you can either green mulch this back into your greenhouse, or if you have a, a permaculture farm like us, you're going to want to feed your organic food to your animals because this is uh, organic. Uh, you know how much it would cost in a grocery store. So, food is free if you grow it. Guys, we caught successfully caught the swarm yesterday. I went up in a heavy piece of heavy equipment up to the swarm. I have footage of it, and I'm editing together the most amazing video of live action um, swarm footage where I'm actually in the swarm, and I pick it up, and I put it into a box. So stay tuned for that. It's going to take me quite a while to edit that together. I've never edited multi-pull video videos together. So I'm going to be figuring out how to do that today for free. Because <laughs> we don't pay for software. we got a lot going on out front with the permaculture farm. And in just a few weeks, we're going to be getting our uh, conservation um, st our conservation plan started. So we have someone coming from the conservation district that's going to draw up a plan for me for the front yard and how we're going to preserve all the native species in this area and bring them into our permaculture farm so we can have abundance for all who come and camp to learn and love and work here uh, together onward and upward guys if you have bees you have free honey that's boom